Good morning and welcome to Dittisham or Ditcham on the River Dart. <laughs> Full cut breakfast in the sunshine. When we arrived here, we got on the visitor's boy, we were given this rather splendid book, which is the uh, Harbour Guide for 2021. And it's got some really good navigation directions, so I thought we'd perhaps follow them um, to show you how we got in here. First though, let's rewind a couple of days and take a look along the coast from the vantage point of Berry Head. From here, you can see north across Tor Bay and look west along the stunning Devon coast. The lighthouse here was built in 1906 and converted to mains electricity in 1994. This lighthouse is one of the shortest in the British Isles. So short in fact it needs a reminder not to look into the light. From the cliff top you can often see pods of porpoise and dolphin playing in the deep water off the head. But it's impressive in a different way to look down on a passing Chinook. But let's get down on the water and do some dolphin spotting. Again. Last time uh, you said you expected there to be dolphins, now there have been dolphins. Are you a little happier? A lot happier, yes. yes. I feel like um, my money's worth it now. It's, Good. It's, yes, I've got my money's worth it. I did ask for the dolphins and they came. Yeah. In the excitement of the moment, we thought we'd seen dolphins. But dolphin fins have a distinct curve. On closer inspection of the video footage, the triangular fin shape tells us these were in fact porpoise. But I'm saying absolutely nothing. With Berry Head behind us, we're sailing west towards Dartmouth. If you're approaching from the east, there are several exposed rocks to avoid. First up is the East Blackstone, a thin, jagged outcrop about half a mile east of the much larger Mewstone. Approaching from any direction though, the first proper sign you're approaching Dartmouth is the day mark on the top of Froward Point. Standing on the cliff top since 1864 to guide ships into the harbour, this 24 metre high tower still serves today as confirmation that your GPS is taking you in roughly the right direction. The Mewstone, the largest of a group of exposed rocks, gives its name to a large south cardinal. 0.4 nautical miles to the west is another south cardinal, this one called West Rock. Past this point you should be able to see the entrance to Dartmouth and you can look out for the first proper mark for the harbour, a green starboard hand mark called Castle Ledge. Time to consult the harbour guide and you need to keep an eye out for the sectored lighthouse on the eastern side and Dartmouth Castle on the west. And there they are. On the west side there's the Checkstone port hand mark and directly opposite is the ancient artillery fort rather grandly named Kingsweir Castle. Completed in 1502 to ward off the French it's now a holiday let which sleeps just four people. The larger Dartmouth Castle was also an artillery fort built to resist French invasion, but work on the west side of the harbour started 150 years or so earlier. Once past the forts and you're in. Keep to the starboard side of the channel, but no further starboard than the moored boats and you'll be fine. Your VHF should be on channel 11 calling Dartnav for berthing instructions, unless of course you fancy a night in one of the three marinas. A little care should be taken as you approach the main town area as there are several ferry services to keep clear of. The lower car ferry is a floating barge with a tug and it reverses out of its slip which on the Kingsweir side is easy to miss as you round the bend. Once you've passed the lower ferry the river opens out and the place is spectacular. It's a very special place to sail into and on a summer's day, well just look at it, amazing. I think I'm in personal heaven. So here we have a Chandler's and here we have a steam railway. Chandler's, steam railway, steam railway Chandler's. It's an old 
the spare parts here and there. And one of those for seven quid. So this morning's task is to change this rollock and put this new uh, rollock in. And um, it should be fairly straightforward. There's a bar goes through the centre there and um, there's two screws that hold it in place, one either side. And what we've got to do then is take that rod out, the centre rod, and then we can put this in its replacement. Interestingly, um, this appears to be a universal size for all uh, dinghies. It doesn't appear to be specific to this XL inflatable tender. There she is, that's the bar. How long has it been since we got the dinghy in the water? I don't know, it's been a while. Three years? Well, I don't know since it's been in the water. Of course, while Dartmouth Town is wonderful and definitely somewhere you should stay a while, the upper reaches of the river are beautiful in a very different way and worth a visit too. Leaving the town and heading up river, the first hazard you need to be ready for is the upper ferry. It's cable hauled and is restricted in its ability to manoeuvre, so give it plenty of room and if necessary, slow down to let it pass. Once away from the hustle and bustle of the town, the river rises quietly into a steep-sided wooded valley, and as the moorings thin out on either side, you need to consult the handbook again and start to look for the anchor stone. Just before you reach the anchor stone, there's a small anchorage area with decent depth and good holding, but if you squeeze through with the tide, the river opens out into a wide but sheltered area and the village of Ditcham. There are several mooring buoys here, and although you might need your dinghy to take the mooring line through the buoy, it's well worth the grief. But the river doesn't stop here. If you have a shallow enough draft, you can go much further, but it's a bit of a risk in a boat like Confidence if you don't know where the mud is. You can take a trip boat all the way to the quaint market town of Totnes. Totnes is full of artisan shops and healthy food eateries, and yes, of course, there's another steam railway. This one follows the river Dart up to Buckfastley. But back to the boat. There's the ferry from Greenway Quay if you want to see Agatha Christie's old house. And Lower Ditcham is a small exclusive community that's worth a row ashore and a stroll around. There. <laughs> so it's been a torturous evening. Endless supplies of wine and cheese. In the middle of August in Dittersham. It's been horrible. Perhaps just more wine. 